When a situation escalates from verbal to deadly, you got to be ready to act right now. Hi everyone, this is John with today's active self-protection lesson out of Arkansas. It's an officer-involved shooting that we're going to see escalate ridiculously fast from a verbal confrontation to a deadly one. We're going to learn some important lessons here about pre-attack cues as well as the steps that we take as we get off the X and we put shots on target to protect ourselves and everyone around us. These officers are pulling this man over as we will hear in the audio because they know that he has licenses suspended for a DWI. We're going to listen in on the encounter from the officer's body cam and then we will come back and learn some lessons. Uh, left. No, I'm stopping you again. I'm off the event for the I'm talking to you because your license is suspended for DWI. You can't be riding any vehicle. Driving any vehicle. I know, I was thinking of a plan, right? Thinking of a plan, I watched you pull into yeah, the car. She wasn't there. And so you're still out driving your scooter, even though I've told you many times you can't be driving the scooter. Okay, Peter. I have an alarm call holding up I mean, Zach, what should I be doing to them? I've told you multiple times. Hey, Zach, man, don't man, man, fuck. Man, I've told you multiple times. I've told you three times, I know for sure, in less than 10 days. You cannot be driving any motorized vehicle, man. Your license is sent up in DWI. You said you said you're going to go to the motorized vehicle and swim? What was your friend's name? I don't want to say if I had a name, but I don't want to say a name. Oh? There's no problem. All you have to do that. Hey, Zach, is your ID in the pocket? Don't reach for it. Is your ID in the back pocket, sir? Uh, hey, Zach. Doesn't know if I reach into your pocket and place your hands back here for me, man. Just place your hands back here for me, man. Just place your hands back here for me, please, sir. Uh, uh, hey, Zach. So the officer has said, hey, let me see your hands, and now they're starting the interview process as we go back and learn some lessons here. Now we know what happens, but they don't, and this is why officers, they do the interviews that they do. And I want to think about a couple things here. First of all, I want to think about, do you notice he looks left there, and now he looks back right. We see those furtive glances, and that's one of two things. He's either looking for a way to escape, or he's looking to see if there are any witnesses for him about to attack. You have to know those kind of pre-attack cues in order to be ready for them in the moment. It looks like the officer with his back to us just has his arms crossed. He's not really anticipating a problem, but if he'd have seen those and really paid attention to them, that might have tipped him off that problems were coming. So now the first officer goes and he's like, look, man, I'm going to put you in cuffs because you got to go to jail because this is the third time I've stopped you and warned you about this. And, and now that it's on, you notice here that the guy's going to go and he gets his gun out from an appendix position. And one of the other things that we're going to notice is this guy is actually left-handed. So, you know, about 85 to 90 percent of the population is right-handed, but it doesn't always happen. We see right here that the guy has gone from his appendix and drawn his gun, and now he has a gun in the fight. And you notice both the officers, our hands are on their gun, but their guns are in the holster. They're at a deficit. And the thing that saves them here is, thankfully, the bad guy did not have his firearm chambered. And because he didn't have his firearm chambered, it took him a lot of extra time. Learn the lesson how long that takes you as a self-defender. I'm grateful that this guy didn't hear. Now you notice that the second officer moves off the X, does a great job of moving, and now he's drove his gun out there, and he's got to get shots on target here. I would guess that's about a 10-yard shot, moving target with an unknown backstop. Very difficult shot to take, but you got to be able to take it in the moment. And you notice there that he stopped shooting the minute the threat ended. You can see the gun has fallen out of the guy's hand, so the officer stopped shooting because our goal is always to stop the threat. He did a great job of doing that. Thank God the guy had to chamber his gun because it gave the officers a chance to get their guns in the fight, to protect themselves from this guy, and to cover their asp.